Hey what is going on FG members and welcome back to the second members only video. Today we're going to be checking out how to create the Divine Strength and Speed mod. I recently put out a vote on what you'd like to see most and this is what you voted for. However we're only going to be looking at how to make the JSON version of the mod today because the spell version is far too complicated to explain all in one video. Alright that said shall we begin? Okay, so the very first thing to do when making a mod is, of course, create a folder. Now, I'm going to call mine Divine Example. You call yours whatever you want to name the mod. And once you have your folder, you're going to need to head over to the Blade and Sorcery Streaming Assets folder. As you see here, you have your mods folder where you would drop all of your mods uh, once you're putting them into the game. But if you come back out, you'll see that you have the default folder. Now in here, and in the Blade and Sorcery folder, you have all of the game's default JSONs at your disposal. So, the one that we're going to be looking for is in Creatures, as we're after the player. And we're going to be taking the Creature Player default male. Now the next part of this is optional. If you want your mod to work for female characters as well, then you're going to want to take both of these so that you can uh, allow that to happen. So we're going to copy those, we're going to go back to our mod folder, and we're going to drop those in there like that. Okay, so what's the next JSONs we need? Well, we've got the charactered ones, which is going to cover the speed, the strength, the jump force, health and focus, and all those aspects. But what about punch and kick power? Well, those are damage JSONs, and those are going to be found... Just bear with me one second. If we go back into the Blade and Sorcery, if we go into Damages, we are looking for Damager Punch and Damager Kick. Fairly straightforward so far. So let's copy those. Head back to our mod folder and paste them in there. Right. So now we have all of our JSON files except one. But we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's get to editing the JSON. So the first thing we're going to do is load up the default player male. We're also going to load up default female. Because if you want it to work for both genders, you're going to have to do this identical. Right. Okay, guys. So once you're here, the first thing you're going to do is scroll right down to the bottom. Because that's where most of the changes in these JSON files are going to take place. Now the first value we're going to look at is locomotion speed. Now this affects how fast your character is going to move around while not sprinting. So we're going to bring that up to say 5. You don't want to bring it up too much because it will be extremely disorientating. So we'll change that for the female as well. Okay, locomotion airspeed is fairly straightforward. This affects how fast that you're going to travel through the air. And we're going to bring that up to about 5 as well. Okay, locomotion jump force. This is how much force you jump off the ground with. I think I have mine set to 0 0.5. Now when dealing with forces, you don't always want to put it up to the highest number because there's two aspects that control how the force works. The actual jump force and then the jump force duration, which plays a huge part. You see you have the jump max duration here, 0 0.6. You can bump that up a little bit if you want, play around with it to what value you like. This will affect basically how far, how high you will go when you're holding down the jump button. You'll bump it up to 0 0.8 for now, just to experiment. Okay, what's next? So you have the backward speed multiplier. This affects how fast your player can run backwards. I'm going to set that to 0 0.6. Male and female. Okay, location strappy speed multiplier affects how fast you run side to side. We're going to set that to 0 0.5. And 0 0.5 for the female as well. Location run speed multiplier, there's obviously how fast you sprint. I set that up to 2.2. You don't want to increase it too much because a small change here is a big change in game when it comes to the speed. Okay, so that's the player movement pretty much done. Okay, now we give our characters divine speed. Let's start working on the strength. So we want to come up here to 
grip force max position and grip force max rotation. I'm not 100% exactly what these values affect, but I'm pretty sure it's to do with how hard you grip objects or how much damage you can do by doing that. So I went ahead and set that to 5,000 and 5,000. Okay, so climbing force, max position, and climbing force, max rotation. These affect your character's ability to climb. It's the difference between using two hands to just about pull yourself over one ledge or using your little finger to flick yourself over the mountain. So we're going to set that to 80,000 and 5,000. And we're going to do the same for the female character as well. Okay, so the next one we're going to be looking at is Force Position, Spring Dampener, X and Y. Now you're going to want to change the X to 18,000 and the Y to 80. I'm not entirely sure why, but these are the values that I found worked best for me. It's up to you to play around with them if you can find one which you, you like the results of more, if you know what I mean. It's trial and error. So the last one we have to do here is the Force Rotation, Spring Dampener. Now I had that set to 8,000 on the X and I just leave the Y alone. Okay, and then this final two on this JSON to do is the force max position and force max rotation. Now I had force max position set to 25,000 and force max rotation set to 2,000. To make sure we apply those changes to the female character as well. 25,000. Two thousand. Make sure we do the force positions for the female character as well. We almost forgot then. That wouldn't have been great, would it? Eighty. Eight thousand fifty, yeah. There you go, and that covers it for the creature player, Jasons. Let's save your changes there and close them down. We're done with those ones. So next we have the punch, Jason. Obviously this is going to affect all the damage done with our character's punches. Okay, so once you're in the damage of punch, Jason, we're going to be looking for the damage value, the add force value, the add force duration value, and the slow motion multiplier. Okay, so here we go. Now we have the damage multiplier. Now it's up to you what you set this to. I'm going to set mine to what divine strength and speed is, which is currently two. Okay, next we're looking for add force and add force duration. Right, here we go, add force. So it's currently set at 250 and we're gonna bump it up to 300. It's up to you if you wanna increase it more. I don't like it to be too unrealistic. So we want the add force duration also to be set to 0 0.25 instead of 0 0.15. That just means it applies the force for a little bit longer before it kicks off. So then we come to the add force slow motion multiplier. This affects how much damage is done while in slow motion because as you know, things tend to be a little bit intensified. So we're going to set that to 1 because we don't want anything too extreme. You might, that's entirely up to you, but this is how I do it. So that's it, we're done with the punch damager now. So now we can go ahead and move on to damager kick. Okay, so once you've opened your damager kick, Jason, it's the same thing as the punch one, you're going to be looking for damage, add force, add force duration, and slow motion multiplier. So we have the damage multiplier here, and for kick, because I like strong kicks, I'm gonna be setting that to 10. And then if we come down to the add force, I believe next, yeah? That is set at 400 already and I'm going to bump that up to 600. And then when it comes to the add force duration, I believe I would like that set to 0 0.25. Like so. Now these punch and kick damages, they affect the female and the male. So you only need to do this once. You don't have to duplicate it for both genders. Lucky us. And that, that about does it. That's it. So now we have... The player done, we have the player's punch and kick done, we have his strength, we have his speed. There's only one last thing to do, 
when creating any mod, you can go into any pre-existing mod. So say if we go into the streaming assets folder, we go into mods. And if we go into, I don't know, let's go into better potions U9. Just steal the manifest, so we'll copy that. Go back to our mod folder, paste the manifest into here, open it up. We want to change the name to the name of our mod, divine example. Your description goes in here, G members rule, oh, typo, standard, author, FG, mod version, yada, 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 game version, yada, 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 press save. And then your mod is ready. If you were to drop this now, so if you were to copy this, we're going to go ahead and cut. Go back to our mods folder and then drop that in there. You now have a working divine strength and speed mod. And of course, you can open up these values and change them as much as you like to your heart's content. But that about wraps up the tutorial on how to make the Divine Strength and Speed mod. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's helped you out with your modding adventures. Please don't forget to smash the like button if you've enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next members only video. Bye for now.